Hello, dear students and friends. Welcome to Billion Hope. This is your mentor, Sandy, bringing you AI for real impact. So AI has come upon us. We did not invite us, but it surely is upon us. And the way AI is impacting every aspect of human existence, deep questions are being raised about the future trajectory of mankind itself. What are the key questions when we talk about AI impacting humanity's future? So that's something very deep. I welcome you to our playlist on AI and the future of humanity. In this playlist, I'll be creating specific sessions dealing with the really deep questions. Every human being interested in knowing what might transpire 5, 10 or 20 years from now will find all this very, very useful. AI and the Future of Humanity, brought to you by Billion Hopes. Have you been checking out our wonderful AI Current Affairs site, Insights? If not, the link is there in the comments. Please do check it straight away. Hundreds and hundreds of well-curated, analyzed posts just for you. Did you subscribe to a free AI newsletter or not? Go ahead and do that. This is perhaps the most wonderful thing you will do. Twice a week, amazing knowledge right in your mailbox. AI for everyone, the link for subscription is in the comments. So AI and humanity's future, this entire debate is working on two tracks right now. Since I have been an AI researcher, practitioner for a few years now, I see two distinct threads of thinking on AI and mankind's future. The first is promise. And the second is peril. So on one hand, we have people who are in the promise camp firmly. On the other, we have people, other hand, we have people who are firmly in the perils camp. The promisers, if I can call them AI promisers, they imagine a world, a utopian world of ubiquitous surplus and people choosing whether they would like to work or not because there is a universal basic income for everyone. And the whole line of thinking goes accordingly. On the other side, we have the AI peril people, let's call them perilers, where they feel that humanity is actually writing its own death warrant and we are going to be subjugated by AI, which is superhuman, which is what the AGI, ASI debate is all about. I'll create very specific sessions on AGI, ASI also. And I keep covering those things in my courses on my academy separately. Check that out for sure. Between these two lies the truth somewhere. Like always, the extremes are generally not true. And what happens in the middle is usually true. So what exactly is that middle? We need to get into some specifics now. Now I have picked up five major issues in this debate. And if you ever have to participate in a thinking process pertaining to the future of humanity, imagine the kind of thing we are talking about now, then maybe these five specific lines of thought can truly help you. The first is, of course, the impact of AI on our employment, our jobs, our entire existence, at least for 99% of humanity. For a moment, we keep aside the 1% elite. The second is about how it will impact defense because when killing somebody is not by your own hand but remotely sitting several thousand kilometers away, even the moral imperative goes for a toss and wanton violence can be the result. The third is amazing amount of data bias which can creep into every aspect of our existence. The fourth is the very real threat of the creation of a massive surveillance state aided by AI. This is actually happening in real time even as we are discussing this. And the fifth is, well, actually what people are really worried about, those who know about it, the alignment problem and the existential risk. Several decades ago, there was a genius, Isaac Asimov, who was a science thinker, science philosopher and a science fiction writer. If you really know about Isaac Asimov, I'll cover his stories also in this series. Two of his stories are absolutely mind-boggling. The last question and the last answer. In the 1950s and 60s, geniuses like Isaac Asimov had speculated on the future direction 
And interestingly, we seem to be moving broadly in that. I'll cover those stories in this series later. For now, let me get back to this point of existential risk and the alignment problem. Here, broadly speaking, the idea is that AI has come alive, AI has started to think, quote unquote, for itself, and AI now has a view on human affairs. And because we humans are inherently seeded with violence, and because we love anthropomorphizing and we believe in anthropomorphism as well as anthropocentrism, so we end up attributing the same values to AI also. But the AI may differ, although we don't want to think even of that possibility. So we believe, we assume that AI will actually see world, see the world from our eyes only and it will also be violent and it will try to control our lives eventually. So there is a huge existential risk because the AI can simply, well, decide for us and that may not be a good day for us. The Matrix uh, movie trilogy was a step in that direction of warning mankind, although that was just fictional. Some parts of it were not, but then most of it was. The alignment problem is all about whether humanity's goals and AI's goals align or not. Even today for the LLMs, the humble LLMs. Hundreds of people work in teams to align the LLMs with the guardrails given in the system prompts and so on. Let's not go into those technical. So let's very quickly understand where we are in this. and. How exactly are we proposing to tackle these five things? So what was the first one? The very first was job displacement and economic inequality. So is this a real threat? Absolutely, yes. I completely concur. This is true. It is a threat. But so it is and so it was with every technological revolution. The earlier technological revolutions right from the Gutenberg printing press, to the arrival of the steam railways, to the arrival of electricity, to the arrival of uh, silicon chips. Every technological revolution brought in its wake huge disruptions. So it is with AI as well. But absolutely new categories of jobs are created at the same time. Today, even as we interact at this point in time, there are at least 30 to 35 totally new categories of jobs pertaining to AI, technical as well as completely non-technical, and in fact many requiring domain expertise. So an expert oncologist, a cancer specialist, may actually end up helping AI companies as a domain expert. So these are adjacent AI roles which will become ubiquitous in the years to come. So at least 30 to 35 major categories of new jobs are also being created. But yes, job destruction happens because it's a seismic shift. Although if you look at the rate of 70 to 80% of projects in generative AI failing in companies, you may get a feel that AI's reign is over. My feel is that the AI game has only just started and the next five years will be a defining phase. But yes, we agree there is disruption and we also agree that there has to be very clear communications from the governments of the world about what they are planning to do about it. Sadly, unfortunately, most governments aren't even talking about it the way they should seriously be. In developing world, where the impact is very severe, like in India, where the IT sector is being fundamentally affected, there's almost no debate on it, no informed public debate on it, which is actually a tragedy. Let's hope things change. And as they say, the more things change, the more they remain the same. <laughs> The second point is autonomous weapons and warfare. We have already over the past 12 months started feeling the impact of AI on the defense industry. The biggest impact is in terms of data analysis and the remote control of smart weaponry. The possibilities are literally endless. And personally, I am very apprehensive about the total disconnect of human morality with smart weapon systems. So, if I am the weapons controller sitting here and the battlefield is 2000 kilometers away, I literally feel no pain. I, I feel no moral punks and compunction while pressing that button that might kill 50 people. That I think is a very deadly turn humanity has taken and there needs to be a deeper deliberation on it. Those who are in power today and enjoying the perks of 
AI enabled warfare, they might be at the receiving end tomorrow, so it's in their own interest to evolve certain systems. The third major area, which at least in the advanced developed Western world has been felt acutely is bias and algorithmic discrimination. In very large companies, they suddenly found that a particular gender or a particular racial group was being discriminated in the hiring processes and it was found that primarily because the AI was trained on historical data which represented a few cohorts more. So yes, if the human society is biased, our AI becomes biased, of course, because the data rep uh, represents the human society which fundamentally was compromised. This has to be actively addressed. And the good thing is companies have started addressing it. Although in the human society, a lot of positive change is not visible to that extent. We are uh, possibly becoming more biased, angrier, more abusive, more violent with the passage of time. But at least there is an effort to make the AI less and less off. So, privacy and the surveillance state remains the fourth huge concern. In fact, states like China are now turbocharging the use of AI to control citizen life at an atomic granular level. It's very frightening to see what's happening in terms of AI and surveillance. And in fact, China seems to be exporting that model to a lot of other developing countries who um, were uh, not so very democratic governments are in power. And they are happily lapping it up. So if AI is working against humanity, so to say, this will be one area where it will be felt most acutely. Let's hope that we get a good pushback on this. And finally, the big issue is about super intelligence, AGI, ASI, etc. If there are any errors in these images, it's all my oversight, so please do forgive me for that. And just as a reminder, please make sure you visit the Insight site every day. Link is there. Hundreds of current affairs post on AI. And make sure definitely you subscribe to our AI newsletter, wonderful free newsletter sent twice a week and wonderful content in it. Please go ahead and subscribe. So what is this existential risk and where will we reach with it? So this will be the last point for me to conclude this beautiful start of a new playlist. Do share in the comments, how did you find it? What should be my next topic for this playlist? And please do share like and subscribe our channel. Thank you so much. Super intelligence or ASI, artificial super intelligence and general intelligence or AGI, artificial general intelligence are the hottest topics of debate in the AI existential circles. AGI is about creating a machine or an AI system which is generally intelligent, not specific narrow domain intelligence. So far it has not been achieved. People say another five years, 10 years, and then the really deep experts say, maybe never. And some very deep experts whom I know personally, they say by 2030. So we don't know. And ASI is self-replicating intelligence. So you have a recursive uh, growth of intelligence where intelligence can create intelligence like you and me humans can do that. And so there will be an exponential rise of it and that would be ASI. So then what will happen to human beings? And so we should plan for that day. I don't know whether we can even plan for that day. And what will happen to the first company or the first person who actually creates that? Would it be a Frankenstein's monster or would that person become the first quadrillionaire? I don't know. So trillionaires we have already reached. The next level would be what? Quadrillion owners? I don't know. Let's see. I don't think the human society is even ready for this. AGI and ASI, if they ever happen, might well be the last invention of man. Beautiful books have been written on it where they say that if we ever achieve AGI and ASI, will we need to invent anything after that? Well, of course, we will not. And will that lead to the utopia of surplus that every human being can enjoy? And maybe we never need to work again unless we want to. So we all start pursuing our interest in art, culture, creative, entertainment, games, sports, movies. And the work drudgery of running the world goes to the AGI, ASI. Or will it end up dominating us like a matrix, uh, like in the movie Matrix? Well, I don't know, and I'm absolutely certain no expert does. We'll have to wait. Overall, these are the challenges, existential challenges, typically encountered in a debate on AI. Did you like this session? Which part of it did you like most? Do let me know. What will be the next topic you would want to want me to take up? Please do share.
So with that, we come to the conclusion of today's beautiful session on AI and the future of humanity. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. This is your mentor, Sandy, bringing you AI for real. Thank you.